Okay. In today's notes, we're going to take a look at the surface area and volumes of similar solids. So the theorem at the top of the page, we have two theorems. Uh, it states that given two similar solids, I want to say that factor of two. A to B. Okay, so that could be a ratio of height or the radius or radii. Okay, given the similar ratio, the ratio of their corresponding areas, which could be lateral areas, base areas, surface areas, is A squared to B squared. So when you think of areas, areas measured in square units, that might help you remember the area. Uh, or the ratio for the corresponding areas. And volume is measured in cubic units, so the ratio of their corresponding volumes is A cubed to B cubed. So let's look at example number one. So given in number one that cylinder A is similar to cylinder B, find the scale factor, the height of the larger cylinder, the ratio of the base area, ratio of the lateral areas, and the ratio of the volumes. So I'm going to start by noting the similarity ratio. So we're given two corresponding radii. So similarity ratio is 8 to 10, which reduces to 4 fifths. So I'm going to use that reduced fraction in four parts A, B, and C. Remember, the scale factor is the reciprocal of the similarity ratio. So the scale factor is five to four, five fourths, or you can write it with a colon, or even with the word two. Okay? And if you didn't want to check this, um, eight times five fourths gives you 40 over 4, which is 10. The height of the larger cylinder, well, in order to find the height for part B, we need to set up a proportion. So, or, actually, we can use the scale factor, since we just found it. So we want to multiply by 4 to get H. So that would be 60 divided by 4 is 12 times 5 is 60, and 60 divided by 4 is 15. So the height of the larger cylinder is 15 units. The ratio of these areas, so remember that's the square of the ratio, so 4 squared to 5 squared, which is 16 to 25, and the ratio of the lateral area, any area, remember, is the same. So this is also 16 to 25. And the ratio of the volumes would be 4 which is 64 to 125. All right, number two. The cylinders below are similar. Find the scale factor of in comparing cylinder one to cylinder two. So given the fact that this cylinder 1, that S, okay, is representing the surface area, and I know that because the unit is in square units. So given the surface area of cylinder 1 and cylinder 2, we can use the ratio of the surface areas to determine our similarity ratio and take the reciprocal. So we know that uh, our similarity ratio, so I'm going to call the ratio of A to B, okay, and there's my ratio of radii. I know that when I take that ratio and square that, we get the ratio of the surface areas. So that would be 288 over... 128. 
And to solve for the similar ratio, A to B, we need to take So A over B is equal to, don't forget your plus minus, and we will reject the negative. 288 to 128. Now 288 and 128 are not perfect squares, but if we look to reduce that fraction, so put 288 over 128 into your calculator, go to math, enter, enter, it's not given in reduced form, and we get that fraction, an equivalent fraction, reduced to a 9 fourths. And 9 and 4 is a perfect square. So A over B is equal to 3 over 2. So there's our similarity ratio. So our scale factor, again, in going from cylinder 1 to cylinder 2, it got smaller. So our scale factor should be less than 1. And it is. The reciprocal of 3 halves is two-thirds. And number three, the cones below are similar. Find the scale factor of the smaller cone to the larger. So I'm going to use the radii again of A to B. So my similarity ratio is A to B. And if we went from the smaller to the larger, our scale factor needs to be greater than one. And we know that when we take that similarity ratio and cubit, we get the ratio of the volumes. So that would be 108 pi to 256 pi. Canceling out the pi's and reducing 108 over 256, you can type that into your calculator. Hopefully we get perfect. So 108 divided by 256. Change that to a fraction. It's 27 over 64. Both perfect cubes. Remember, you can see your perfect cubes if you go to uh, y equals. And actually, um, looks like I was showing somebody how to find all the perfect squares, perfect cubes. Fourth, fifth. So now we go to the table. We can see um, three cubed is 27, and four cubed is 64. So we're going to. I'll rewrite it as a over b cubed equals 108 over 256. Actually, no, right there. I'll write the reduced form of 27 to 64. So now when we take the Q root, it's sort of the Q, we have A over B equal to 3 fourths. So therefore our scale factor is 4 thirds, and that's greater than 1. Number 4 says the length, width, and height of the prism are tripled. So to the right, we can see we have a rectangular uh, prism. Describe the effect on the surface area and the volume. Well, if their dimensions are triple ratio, so if we do 1 squared to 3 squared in volume, 1 cubed to 3 cubed, that would give us a ratio of 1 to 9 and a ratio of 1 to 27. So that means the surface area is nine times as large, and the volume is 27 times as large. Okay, number five. Cones A and B are similar with a scale factor of 5 to 2. So let's actually draw two cones.
here's the larger one, and then here's my smaller one. This time, instead of using um, the radii for my similarity ratio, I'll use the slant height, so 5 to 2. So that means for me, this is cone A and this is cone B. Find the surface area and volume of cone B, given that the surface area of cone A, so for cone A, the surface area is 2,356.2 square centimeters, and the volume is 7,450.9 cubic centimeters. Round your answer to two decimal places. So let's take, make two columns, and this side will be the word for volume. And we know that when we take the surface area and we square it, we get the ratio of the surface area. So 2,356.2. And when we take the similarity ratio and cube it, we get the ratio of the volume. So I'll call this over Y and call it over X. Doing the cross product, uh, well, 5 squared is 25, so this ends up being 25X. 2 squared is 4, so we get four times 2,356.2, okay? So if we grab a calculator, if we multiply by four, divide by 25, we get X equals 376.992. We're rounding to two decimal places, our surface area. of column B, I use a capital, yeah, is about um, 376.99 centimeters squared. For volume, uh, 5 cubed is 125 times Y, 2 cubed is 8, so 8 times 7,450.9. So let's multiply 7,450.9 by 8, then divide by 125 to isolate y. And we get y is equal to 476.8576. So I need to show what's after the 5 because we're running to two decimal places. And we end up with an answer of of column B is about approximately 476.86 cubic centimeters. And the last one. The surface areas of two similar figures are given below. The volume of the larger figure is given. Find the volume of the smaller figure. So again, we don't know the figure, but I'll use A and B for the ratio. And given the surface areas, we know that when we square the ratio, we get 16 over 100. And those two uh, numbers are perfect squares. Take the square root, we get A over B equals plus and minus. Let's reject the negative of 4 tenths. Using the 4 tenths, we know that when we cube that ratio, we get the ratio of the volumes. Now over here, this was obviously the surface area of the small to large, and then it said the volume of the larger figure is given. So I'm going to say the volume of the small equals x. So in this case, uh, the x is in the numerator. The 500 is in the denominator. So uh, 4 cubed is 64, so we have 64 times 500, and 10 cubed is 1,000x. 
So multiply and divide by 1,000, we get x equals 32. So the volume of the smaller figure is 32 cubic 